All right, we know a little bit more about how the Jonathan Smith hurrying unfolded. We know a lot more about his staff. He's bringing to East Lansing. We talk about all that and a ton more. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more, and right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That is $150 if your team wins. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Spartan friends, Spartan family, locked on Spartans listeners, how on earth are we all doing to kick off the week here? And if you are anything like me, you are still skipping through your days because it is A glorious start to another chapter here of Michigan State football. We talked about it over the weekend. We are loving the Jonathan Smith hire. And no, this is not just me. There's a lot of national pundits, too, that are loving this hire as well. We're going to get to all those at the end of the show. But first, we got a lot to talk about with the staff. Some MSU roster news, some recruiting news. It's going to be a hoot and a half of a show, but first, hey, please rate, review, and subscribe to this year's podcast or YouTube channel. If you're listening on the podcast, Hey, if, if you're feeling peachy, go ahead and give us a five-star review. And if you ever want to reach out, LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com is the place to find us. So what we do know with Jonathan Smith is, yes, not only did he land in East Lansing, he had a nice Sunday night dinner with Tom Izzo and his family as well. But Tuesday at noon will be his official press conference at Michigan State. Uh, he met with the team 9 a.m. Monday morning. By all accounts, players are liking what they are hearing. And, well, you could probably expect him to be introduced to the fan base for Tuesday night's basketball game against Georgia Southern. You're tuning into today's show to get a Georgia Southern basketball game preview. Here it is. Listen closely. It's going to go quick. They are 0-6. Michigan State should win by no less than 30 points. All right, that was your basketball update. Back to the football. Uh, Now, He did chat with the media on Sunday at Lansing Airport here in a little bit. And one thing that was interesting in his brief conversation with the media is that he said that he knew for a while that he wanted this Michigan State job. That's fascinating. Like, And he really kind of left a mystery out there of what he meant by that. Does that mean that, hey, when this whole story about Mel Tucker broke on that Saturday night at midnight, was he already thinking about the Michigan State job back then? Or was Alan Haller already in conversations with him for a little longer than we all were led on to believe? Spartans Illustrated, who, by the way, as you guys know, they've been nailing this whole coaching search up and down the last few weeks. David Harnes really gave us a nice peek behind the curtain there over at Spartans Illustrated. So go subscribe to those fine people. I want to pull out a few things, not the whole 2,800-word article because that would take me forever to read. And, well, hey. You got to subscribe. You got to pay to get the real good stuff. But there are a few things I do want to pull out of there. And a lot of it has to do with the secrecy of this whole coaching search. How on earth Alan Haller was able to do this and have Michigan State be the ones to announce the hire before anyone else did. I mean, in 2023, it's almost impossible to do this without anything leaking at a large scale. And well, the leaks, if there were any, were very small. And well, there's a few reasons for that. Alan Haller written in the Spartans Illustrated report, he wouldn't fly out of Lansing Airport for these conversations. When he was going out west to talk with Jonathan Smith, he would fly out of a different airport and he would use a company that doesn't have public flight tracking information because internet hooligans, like myself, we like to play a game of who's on that flight. Alan Haller knew that as well. And well, he didn't leave any bread crumbs behind for us to follow. Also, hey, leading up to here, Spartans Illustrated, as we talked about many a time on this show, they were able to lock down, all right, who MSU is hiring, who is coming back for the second round of interviews. For both of those breaking stories, they did not get their information from any Michigan State sources. They were all from outside Michigan State. So, yes, Michigan State was as locked tight as they could possibly be during this whole process. And I also do want to reiterate the importance of just getting this done as quick as they did. 
Alan Haller, Jonathan Smith on Saturday morning, right after the Michigan State Penn State game, which just went great. And then, well, also after the Oregon Oregon State game, they got it done Saturday morning in a handshake agreement. So, hey, they beat the punch to a few other firings, a few other uh, games of musical chairs going on this weekend. So, there you have it. They got it done. Now, let's talk about the staff here that Jonathan Smith is bringing over. We do know of five assistant coaches right now that are being brought to East Lansing from his Oregon State staff. It is offensive coordinator Brian Lindgren, uh, offensive line coach. Okay, it's a tough name here. Here we go. You guys ready? Jim Mahalchek. Jim Mahalchek, or he goes by Coach M. We're going to call him Coach M a lot here in the next few years. Tight ends coach Brian Wozniak, defensive back backs coach Blue Adams, and then running backs coach Keith Banafa. Now he has other personnel as well. We're going to talk about these assistant coaches, but we're going to hone in on the coordinator position right now. And we're going to start with offensive coordinator Brian Lindgren. All right, what makes him different than MSU? What can we expect from this Oregon State offense, just stylistically right off the top? Helping us here is an account, J. Bud Davis on Twitter. He charts up, hey, what looks do teams go against? What kind of personnel do they run? Do they do design runs? How often do they... Whole lot of analytics, whole lot of numbers, whole lot of great breakdowns. So J. Bud Davis. We're going to see more 12 personnel here. All right. Now what that is, is a two tight end set and one running back. They almost double the amount of 12 personnel that we've seen at Michigan State under Jay Johnson in the last few years. They do more outside runs. 72% of their plays came with an outside run, whereas, hey, it was just 52% for Michigan State this year. That will be a welcome sight to these eyes who just got so sick of just inside run after inside run. So, yeah, a little more outside run from Brian Lindgren's offense. A little more pre-snap motion as well. They do pre-snap motion about 25% of the time, whereas Michigan State did it around 15% of the time as well. So let's talk about numbers, too. What kind of numbers were they generating? How about 33.8 points per game this year? All right, that is 28th in the nation, 5th in the Pac-12, 29.3 points last year, 30.3 points the year before that. So that all goes to say, unlike what we've seen here in East Lansing, especially this year, is that, yeah, they can put up upwards of 30 points. And they did score north of 20 points in every game this year besides the grand finale against Oregon, who Oregon is a, is a machine, man. I, they are just doing great. Also... Brian Lindgren, he does take quarterbacks under his wing as well. So it's really kind of two guys hammering the quarterback position at the same time here. Because as we know, Jonathan Smith, former quarterback, he has a say as well. But both him and Smith, look, they helped revive DJ Uyungle's career at Clemson, where it looked like that, oh my God, this guy was a former all what? This guy looks terrible over in Clemson after a few years there. Okay. Looked more than competent over there in Corvallis. Just in one year, they were able to kind of revive him into a good college quarterback. And also, let's not kid ourselves here, could there be a relationship between these two guys, Smith and Lindgren, and also four-star quarterback Adrian Childs? Now, if you're not hip to Adrian Childs, freshman quarterback at Oregon State this year, top 100 recruit out of high school, turned down a smattering of offers to go play for Jonathan Smith in probably Oregon State's biggest recruiting win of all time. Now, did Childs commit to Oregon State for the staff, like Lindgren, like Smith? Is he going to be, hey, persuade to come up to East Lansing? Who knows? And there very well could be an opening here because, well, I don't be surprised if there's a guy that enters the portal here in a little bit in the quarterback room. Again, I should probably have said this at the start of the show. Right now, as we're recording, it is a little after 3 p.m. on Monday. I say that because, guys, things are moving really fast here, so I want to be very transparent. Uh, if something has broke late Monday, I didn't miss it. It just hasn't happened yet as I am recording. Now, let's go to the defensive coordinator side of things right now. Nothing yet. Again. Middle of the day Monday, there is nothing yet for the defensive coordinator. And all eyes are on the prize of Trent Bray. That was the defensive coordinator over at Oregon State. He has not joined Jonathan Smith's staff here. Well, because he's in the running to take that Oregon State head coaching role that Jonathan Smith just let open. Just like Smith, Trent Bray, he's also a former Oregon State player, and he 
constructed the best defense in the Pac-12 in 2022 in nearly every metric you look at. Uh, now, this will be a very tough pull for what we just named. Like, he could be the next coach in waiting over there in Corvallis. All right, that's not going to be easy. Now, let's say for some reason he doesn't even get that head coaching job over there. Well, USC also has a defensive coordinator position that's wide open as well. All right, there could be other West Coast teams that need a good defensive coordinator. It would be a really impressive recruiting win for Jonathan Smith to pull Trent Bray over. But yes, he is a cat's pajamas. I mean, that that is a strong, strong defensive unit over there in Corvallis. And let's say that he doesn't do it. I just got one name I'm going to throw out. This is a name that we already know. This is maybe a name that you've already heard be thrown out. But I would give a strong look at Jim Leonard, all right, former Wisconsin defensive coordinator. He gave his try at head coaching here for about two seconds over in Madison. Did not go well, but right now he is a senior analyst over at Illinois. He's probably begging for another coordinator position. Now, that's easier said than done because like most professions in life, a lot of this is going to be based on previous connections, all right? Social networking. Like, do I know you? Have I worked with you before? There's no link between Jonathan Smith and Jim Leonard. So, it's a lot harder to get a job if you're like, hey, what's up, man? I don't know you. I've never talked to you. I don't know what you're all about whatsoever. Do you want to make one point something million dollars here to run my defense? Awkward cold call to make, whereas, you know, typically in the past, again, this isn't football specific. This happens in accounting. This happens in farming. This probably happens all over the place. You might want a guy that you tangibly know at least, but yeah, that's a name I would 100% throw out there, Jim Leonard, because... Not only did he construct a def good defenses, but he's got the Midwest and Big Ten ties as well. Whereas the rest of that staff I just named, they might not. We're going to get into the rest of the staff here here in a hot second. But first, guys, just need to talk your ear off about Fan Duel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in the game. I enjoyed another great weekend on Fan Duel, and this time, hey, I actually got to take some money from Fan Duel. Really mixing it up here. They keep it fun, and especially for new customers, they're going to keep it really fun for you guys. Because new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. You heard me right. That's $150 if your team wins. You don't need the spread. You don't need to lay the points. Just take a money line team for $5. And if you win, 150 smackaroos in bonus bets right your way. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel point blank, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over, under, so much more, including, oh, God, my favorite. I am addicted to those first-time touchdown score bets, and sometimes they even work out for yours truly. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. It's FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Also, need to talk your ear off about LinkedIn Jobs Gang. That's right, the number one job search engine out there. Whether you're sorry, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. Hey, maybe even Alan Haller used LinkedIn Jobs. I don't know. He had a really good list of candidates. That's why you have to go check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster. And my favorite part for free. If it's free, it's for me. And also, it's just so easy with LinkedIn. Even a schmuck like me can easily post a job on there. So while you do so, add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. Hiring is made easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 20 four hours on LinkedIn. Thankfully with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions. You got that right, Buster. They apply. All right, let's go down the rest of the list of the staff here because that's just one guy that we named that is following over. Offensive coordinator Brian Lindgren. There are four other assistants that are joining Michigan State right now. Before I get to that, though, I'm going to do something incredibly strange, right? Okay, I just want everyone to bear with me here. I'm about to talk about how good these assistants are that are coming from Corvallis to East Lansing, all right? I, I'm going to build these guys up, all right? However, deep down inside of me, I, I'm going to be reluctant in completely buying into the hype, you know, just being sold already because, guys, I, this, this is a terrible comparison to make, but I... I feel like a dog at the shelter. 
All right. And hey, you know what? The last people that picked me up from here, they were smiling. I was told by the shelter how great life would be. It was going to be awesome in my new life, you know, getting out of this pound. But oh man, when I got home, they just kept me chained up outside the entire time to the shed all year long, especially even in the winter. I, I was only fed once a day if I was lucky. Uh, I got bit by a raccoon once. And my owners never even thought to check it out. It was horrible. But here I am back at the shelter, back at square one. And oh God, I see another crew of assistant coaches that are coming in smiling at me and I'm being told how great things are going to be. I want to be optimistic, but based on what just happened with the last staff, after hearing about how solid they were going to be, hey, I was one of the people that told you how great they were going to be based on all the circulating fun news about them. And hey, this offensive line coach, he's one of the best. And then you saw the offensive line not get any better. Yeah. So, uh, Apologies for being a little gun shy to completely buy into a staff, but hey, what I'm going to do here is I'm still going to relay why everyone else is fired up. If you want to be one of these people that just buy in completely and say that, yes, these four guys are the best, we're going to do that right now. This, These are the talking points here, but excuse me for giving it like a year or two before I really anoint these guys as, yes, great coaches, and we're going to start with the best one of the bunch, supposedly. This is offensive line coach Jim Mahalchek. All right, like I said, it's not just me talking about this. It's not just Michigan State message board users or Michigan State beat writers saying this, especially on the West Coast. Pac-12 people as well are saying this, that he is the best assistant coach that they have out there in that side of the country. Uh, his offensive line, a Joe Moore finalist in 2021. He's a Broyles Award nominee. And hey, you know what? This year in the upcoming draft, Tualis Fauga is going to be a top 15 pick. He's a right tackle that he helped develop into a top 15 NFL pick. Um, also, it, it, recruiting also plays a big part of this as well. Oregon State had one four-star verbally committed to this year's class. His name is Rustin Yun. He is out of Honolulu. He's a four-star tackle. And he's already said that he wants to come visit Michigan State probably because he is very attracted to Coach M and his development and just, you know what he's built up to be. Again, guys, heard a lot about this with the last offensive line coach, but uh, this one has a little more substance to it. Again, we're going to give it a beat before uh, we start throwing the parade here. Tight end coach Brian Wozniak. Hey, here's your one guy that has Midwest ties. He's from Ohio. He played at Wisconsin. If anyone remembers that 2012 overtime game against Wisconsin where we won in uh, overtime with the Andrew Maxwell pass, Brian Wozniak, one catch for 11 yards in that game. Uh, also, hey, you know what? Uh, he sent Luke Musgraves to the second round last year. All right, sophomore tight end Jack Velling had eight touchdowns for the Beavers this season. Okay, guys, I, again, you actually can see the proof in the pudding. You can see the guys he has developed over at Oregon State. So this is why people are excited. All right, and also has a big hand in recruiting as well over at Oregon State. Most likely will over here as, again, he's one of the few guys with Midwest ties coming over. Defensive back coach Blue Adams played at Cincinnati. He played in the NFL. He coached in the NFL, and he is about to have his fourth defensive back drafted since he took over coaching. All right, now we're going to go to a tweet from Al Karsten to talk about uh, Oregon State safety, Kitten Oladapo. So Al Karsten, great follower. Go, go follow his work, Al Karsten. He highlighted all these things about, hey, how can Blue Adams develop players? Well, here is a sterling example because Kitten Oladapo came over as a 2018 zero-star walk-on. He started for three and a half years over in Corvallis. 2022 first team, all Pac-12. He probably will be again in 2023, multiple Pac-12 defensive player of the week honors. And on pro football focus, an 89 point defensive grade. That is the third best safety in NCAA football. All that, just like Al Carson pointed out, is from a guy that had zero stars by his name out of high school. So again, we're not just hearing about what coaches can do, what they can bring here. This is actually what they have done. They have developed players. They have brought them to the NFL. And then last but not least of the staff that we know that is coming over here, Keith Banafa. Former Hawaii running back, one year on Oregon State staff. He was at Boise State for a year prior as associate head coach. And, well, hey, let's talk about recruiting right now because four-star running back Jason Brown out of Seattle 
One of his first offers was from Boise State with Coach Banafa there. And Keith was a lead recruiter on that as well. They have a built-in relationship. I have heard from a little bird that there has been communication between Michigan State and Jason Brown to see if they could land him on this signing day. Again, may be asking a lot, but also maybe not because there's already familiarity between these two. He was at Washington before that, Boise State before that. He's had five running backs drafted in his nearly two decades of coaching in college. But again, guys, this is the difference between this staff and the last staff. I feel like last time we were trying to sell ourselves. We were trying to see, okay, how can this work? How can they develop? Whereas with these guys, we've seen that they had have developed people. So that's five out of 10 assistant coaches right now that you are allotted. All right. It may even be up to seven out of 10 because like we talked about over the weekend, Courtney Hawkins, he's heavily rumored to be joining the staff again as receivers coach. And well, Nick Marsh certainly likes to hear that as well. And also Harlan Barnett may or may not be sticking around. Now, if he does stick around, will it be one of those 10 assistant coaching roles? I don't know. Quite frankly, I hope it's more of like an analyst role or, I don't know, just like a, a, a greeter outside the stadium, whatever it is. I hope he doesn't take up one of those 10 spots. But, hey, Jonathan Smith wants to be the nicest guy in the world. There's your 7 of 10 coaches. Now, I do have a suggestion here. But, of course, we're going to make that a cliffhanger here because really quick, guys, you need to talk your ear off about prize picks, the leader in daily fantasy sports. Prize picks makes life so simple, so easy to just watch a game and be locked into a game that otherwise you would not care any less about. Like tonight, Vikings Bears. Ever since Kirk Cousins went down with his injury, two teams that I have really no connection towards. But hey, on prize picks, I'm going to pick my players. I'm going to look at their stats, guess over or under, and then I'm just going to sit down on the couch as I try to multiply my money times 25. Also, speaking of injuries like Kirk Cousins had, uh, Price Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. That's right. For football and basketball, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy, and also they want to make sure that you are winning right off the bat. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. It's prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Also, need to talk your ear off about home field apparel. I'm rocking my home field apparel Michigan State golf shirt, the home field apparel hat, and you and your loved ones need to be wearing home field this holiday season as well. Hey, if you're listening on this Monday, they have their Cyber Monday Monday deals going on right now. If you're listening after Monday, we'll smash in promo code LOS23 for 15% off of your first order. Now, what do you get when you get a home field apparel package sent to your house? You get some sweet, sweet vintage logos on t-shirts, lawn sleeve t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, or just like I said, even the hat as well. And they will be the most comfortable articles of clothing you will have in your closet. Every time I slip on a home field shirt, I, it feels like I just put a cloud over my body. It feels like I'm being hugged by a choir of angels. It is truly the best clothing brand out there. So what are you waiting for? Again, gang, homefieldapparel.com, homefieldapparel.com. And hey, Jonathan Smith, I know you're listening out there. I, I know that he would never miss an episode of Lockdown Spartans. I have a suggestion for a coach that I would not mind seeing make a return to East Lansing. And no, I'm not going to retread a coach. This is a former player that we all know. I wonder if there could be any legitimacy behind it, if this could even be feasible, if this, if this would be of interest to either party. I'm just throwing spaghetti on the wall, and I'm going to see if it sticks here. I wonder if bringing Max Bola back would be a good idea for one of those 10 coaching roles, or at the very least, a defensive analyst role. Now, why do I say that? No, it's not just because I was a big fan of his back in the Rose Bowl season and, hey, I just like when Spartans come back. Like, No, there's a – it goes much deeper than that. Right now, he is a grad assistant at Notre Dame. All right, before that, he spent three years as a grad assistant at Alabama. This guy, after his playing days in the NFL – he hasn't just been at some programs. Like, no, he's been around championship programs and has been seen what it takes. Also, what have I kind of just alluded to the last two segments when it comes to Coach Smith's staff coming over? 
is the lack of Midwest recruiting ties. Okay, that that could be a guy right there that you want in the family room of Midwest programs around the area here. Also, I just this happened maybe a year ago, and this is just stuck in my head rent free ever since. But Mike Vrabel, head coach of the Tennessee Titans, he was on a show called Bussin' with the Boys, and he was asked in his NFL coaching time, or even his playing days, he might have gone back that far. Who's the smartest player that you've been around that you've coached? Think of all the players. Think of all the future, you know, pro bowlers or maybe, dare I say, Hall of Famers that Mike Vrabel has been around in his time. The player that he highlighted was Max Bola. Of all the players he's coached in the NFL, and he talked about how he didn't even need to take practice, but yet he could play seven different positions. He was the most cerebral player he's ever had. He was smart. Also, when you talk about Max Bola, too, like what he's doing at Notre Dame or what he did at Alabama, you hear nothing but high remarks as well. Would it be a big jump to go from grad assistant to one of the 10 coaches? Yeah, it may be. But, hey, at the very least, then give him that analyst role. That would be an upgrade from a grad assistant job at Notre Dame. So, again, I, I'm just spitballing here. We've been having fun, you know, listening to the news about what has actually happened. I just want to throw a Hail Mary here and just see if, you know, I, I think that there could be something there with Max Bola back at Michigan State. So that's just my two cents if anyone wants to relay that. To Coach Jonathan Smith, uh, please be my guest. Really quick, some other personnel that is following Jonathan Smith from Corvallis, strength and conditioning coach Mike McDonald. He also worked for Washington during their great 2016 college football playoff season. And look, I'm not going to claim to have a bunch of stats that back up how good a strength and conditioning coach is, but Oregon State does play tough. They play physical, and well, they can't possibly have injury issues worse than Michigan State has the last few years, so I can only assume by default that will be an upgrade. In the recruiting department, Dan Van Der Reet, I hope I'm saying that right, or Dan Van Der Reet, I'm sorry, DVD is what we'll call him, chief of staff over from Oregon State. He's actually been with Oregon State for the last 20 years, but has, so to speak, become Jonathan Smith's right-hand man. He is joining him as well. And then Cole Moore, Director of Player Personnel. He was at Texas before he was at Oregon State. He was at Washington before that. So this is a well-traveled guy. I believe he's even from New Jersey. So this man's home is just the United States of America. He's been all over as well. Really quick, let's get to some recruiting news. I'm sorry, roster news, roster news. The transfer portal opens up next Monday, but that's not going to stop players from announcing their intention to go into the transfer portal. Guys like Darius Snow, the linebacker, He's entering the transfer portal. He'll have two years of eligibility left, and believe it or not, can actually apply for a third year. I feel like he's already been playing college for five years, but yeah, nothing but best of luck to him. Obviously a terrible situation with what happened with his leg injury last season and never really got back to 100%, but yeah, so Darius Snow, he is in the transfer portal, and then Spencer Brown as well. So best of luck to him. Uh, all right, and uh, one more piece of recruiting news. Andrew Dennis, he was a decommit for Michigan State not too long ago. He was really a cheerleader for this class as well. He was at many official visit weekends. This guy was awesome for Michigan State on the recruiting trail. He later decommitted and has actually just committed on Monday to Illinois. So I know the staff was going to try to obviously talk to Andrew Dennis, but it looks like that hmm, – Maybe too late for that one. So the four-star tackle out of Mount Pleasant going to play for Brett Bielema down in Champaign. Now, I do want to talk about this to end the show. National reactions to the hiring because I don't think Michigan State fans are like split 50-50. I think for the most part, state fans like myself, they're pretty thrilled about this. But let's just talk about what you know people around the nation are saying. Let's kick it off with this. Barrett Sally of cvssports.com. He's been grading the coaching hires, not just at Michigan State, but around the country as well. And he gave Michigan State's hiring of Jonathan Smith an A+. I'll say that again. Jonathan Smith to Michigan State gets an A+. He wrote, Smith is the perfect hire for Michigan State. The former Oregon State quarterback rebuilt the Beavers program into a consistent team despite challenges in the recruiting department. Michigan State is bound to be a developmental program in the new look Big Ten, and Smith has proven that he's one of the best at developing talent throughout his coaching career. All right, guys, so see, it's not just me. It's not just, you know, Mr. Hey, the guy that always wears a Michigan State t-shirt and a Michigan State hat with Michigan State stuff all in the background. This guy's a Homer fan. Of course, he loves a Jonathan Smith hire. They could have hired Grimace from McDonald's and he would like it. Like, no, no, no. There is 
overwhelming support for this move. Also, I don't have just him. There's other people as well, like Bud Elliott of the Cover 3 podcast. Guy consistently scores points despite not having big-time quarterbacks, develops players, has a plan, etc. Nobody who has to coach against Michigan State is happy about the hire, I can guarantee you. And let's hear from a great friend of Michigan State fans. I, you guys know I love this guy, but Joe Klatt, he does have a prominent voice in national media, so let's hear what he had to say as well. He says, quote, this is a great hire. He's a perfect guy for Michigan State because in a lot of ways, his teams play the way Michigan State teams play in order to be successful. He was very good at developing a tough, physical run-oriented team at a place that's tough to do so. And that that's kind of going to springboard where we're going to end this show at because if there's one pet peeve I've had the last few days – ever since the hiring was made, or maybe even weeks when Jonathan Smith's name was brought up. I am tired of the opinion. And look, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. That's fine. I see a lot of opinions that I read. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm not going to hit on that. This one I'm sick of, though, is hearing that, oh, we settle for mediocrity. Oh, he's a below 500 coach. Oh, guess we're going to go six and six again. Oh, we're going to be happy with just going seven and five right now. Jonathan Smith, he's very mediocre. When you say that, that's a great way of just letting me and everyone else know that you have no idea how to understand context. All right, we're going to hit on two things here. We're just going to hit on the, the sub 500 thing right now. The sub 500 part, which again, he's one game below 500 in his years in Corvallis. That was largely due to him overtaking a program that had a team that went one and 11 before he stepped in. And hey guys, I'm, I'm just going to let you in on a little secret here. I love Michigan state. I think very highly of this program, but let's have a reality check. This is going to be a rebuild as well. Okay. This guy isn't coming in to a team that is consistently 10 and two, 11 and one, like, no, we need a guy that can rebuild a program because we are a program that needs rebuilding. All right. Hey, sub 500. That's great. He went, ten, he went two and 10, five and seven, a little dip in the COVID season, then seven and five, 10 and three and eight and four. The four losses this year, a 24 point loss to Oregon, which actually, if you look at it, that's one of the closer games that Oregon has played all season. A two-point loss to Washington. Hey, remember when we played Washington? We lost to them by 92 points. A road loss to a top-20 Arizona team and a road loss early on at Washington State to start the season. He has rebuilt this program by playing tough physical football, developing players and guys. I don't know if you remember what this looks like. I certainly don't, but having an identity on the field. You know what you're getting with Jonathan Smith, and that's why he is 25 and 13 over his last three years. Once he really got the wheels churning at a place where it's very hard to get the wheels churning out of the mud. Corvallis is not a bastion for football. They're not swimming in resources. They're not swimming in a recruiting hotbed. But yet, 25 and 13 over the last three years after he got them off the mat. The other thing that is just driving me crazy, too, is that, oh, well, Jonathan Smith's mediocre. Oh, this sucks. Oh, this is a terrible hire. First of all, how crazy is it that, like, the only negative things that we are hearing is from that minor subsect of Michigan State fans? <laughs> like, I, rival fans hate this hire. The national media loves this hire. But yet, like, the only people poo-pooing this are, like, some Michigan State fans. So I ask you this question. Who else did you want, then? Who else did you want here in East Lansing? I swear to God, if anyone says Pat Narduzzi or Jimbo Fisher or Chip Kelly, I'm going to need you to get out of the time machine that's stuck in 2013 and join us here in 2023 where all three of those guys are trying to compete for most underwhelming head coach of the last decade. So anyway, who else did you want? Oh, Urban Meyer? Guys, I wanted Urban too. You've heard me talk up and down about how much I wanted Urban Meyer, of course, but hey... He doesn't want to be anywhere, guys. The only place he wants to be is two places. On that desk at Big Noon Kickoff, where he's already making a lot of money, working a lot less than college football head coaches does. And the other place he wants to be, Sarasota, Florida, in the offseason. Right? Not recruiting, not flying around the country, not doing this massive rebuild program that Michigan State would have left him. Hey, from what I know, Michigan State made it abundantly clear that, hey, we know that you have a king's ransom. We do have everything in place to give you what you're looking for. At the end of the day, 
Urban just said, no, it's 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 too much work. Uh, I'm good. So unless you wanted to kidnap Urban Meyer, or I keep saying, or I keep hearing the give him an offer you can't refuse. I don't know if MSU is going to offer him $25 million a year, guys. Like they, what they could have gathered was going to make him one of the highest paid, if not the highest paid coach in the nation. And he still doesn't want to coach guys. That just is what it is. So again, I keep hearing that we'll make another guy say no, like Dan Lanning or Kalen DeBoer over at Washington. Throw them $9 million a year. Hey, we have the Big Ten media money. Hey, guys. We're not the only team with a lot of money with this new Big Ten deal. Oregon will also have that money. They were going to match whatever Michigan State offered, whatever Texas A&M was going to offer. Same with Washington, most likely. And let's say, you know, that Jonathan Smith did say no. Let's say if it wasn't our guy. Well, it, it seems abundantly clear that Mike Elko is going to be taking that Texas A&M job. Okay, now who are you left with? Jed Fish, the guy who all but openly is just – moving into the UCLA job whenever that opens up, just standing outside of their stadium with a police hire me sign? No, Lance Leopold. Okay, I don't think he was going to leave Kansas. And what are you going to do now, now that all four of those guys are not on the table? Call up Jason Candle. Call back Dave Clawson of Wake Forest. Like, guys, when I say that Jonathan Smith is one of the best, if not the best names of this coaching carousel, that's not just me blowing green and white smoke up your butt. That is what... National pundits are saying that is what this job market is saying. There is no younger hot shot coach than there is with Jonathan Smith and Mike Elko, the top two guys for the job. Michigan State went with Jonathan Smith, and that should be celebrated. I, I don't, I don't get the poop hooing over this. I don't get the hey, hire someone better. G give me someone better then, because I look. If it was another another coach, another place, they were going to match it. If it was this fantasy of Urban Meyer, I, guys, he just he didn't want it. I'm sorry. Makes make, makes me a little sad, but that's just reality. You, you can't kidnap a guy and make him coach here. So that's why I have. That's why I like the Jonathan Smith hire. Is it guaranteed going to work? No, of course not. But hey, of the guys available in this market, they got the best guy. And again, credit to Alan Haller. They got him before anyone else could. Go green, guys. All right. I hate to end a, a, an episode just like angry, but oh, if I got to read one more thing about like, oh, so we're just happy with being mediocre. Yeah, that that's why we jumped on the top guy available as quick as we did, because we love being mediocre. That that that's what getting 10 wins in Corvallis, Oregon is mediocre. God, that, that, that's a bigger miracle than Jesus turning water into wine for all I care. No, it's it's a good hire, guys. So just deal with it. All right. Anyway, tomorrow we will be back. We're going to break down this press conference. Any other news that happens, then I guess we'll talk about this basketball team. Oh man. Great game against Arizona last week, guys. Uh, I, I've not railed on them for that yet, but we'll see if we ever do. Who cares anymore? All right, gang, this has been fun. Love you all. Go.